All right. Welcome back to Wrestling Tonight. I am your host, Mad Dog Butch. Along with me, as always, the Sims to my Charlotte, <laughs> none other than Brace Beamer. Yeah, yeah. And our very special guest this week is the CEO of the Michigan Wrestling Alliance. None other than Jason the Basher Klaus. I'm, go- I'm going to have to correct oh, you. I can do that. Michigan Wrestling Organization. What did I call Michigan- it? You said Alliance. Oh, oh, Let's sorry. follow the product. That was our old one, man. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> sorry about that. Right out the gate. Yeah, I know, man. I, I, wrote, yeah. I wrote down it. I wrote down organization so I wouldn't make the same mistake. <laughs> yeah, I normally do that the opposite way when yeah. I'm talking about the, the old MWA. I, say mwo but anyway i digress uh so obviously today we will be talking to the basher about uh michigan wrestling alliance uh michigan wrestling organization jeez (laughs) thanks for joining us sorry (laughs) michigan Michigan wrestling alliance (laughs) was it hey okay you guys were originally called the mwa though is that what it stood for no michigan wrestling association oh Ah, okay i didn't know that yep you know, right. In 2001, we, we changed to MWO. Oh, huh. really? It was 2001? Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought it was before that for some reason. But huh. uh, Okay, before we get into that, <clears throat> I don't know if you've watched our show at all, but um, you know, we really appreciate you coming on the show. Um, whenever we have a special guest, we like to give them a special gift. And I think that this is um, somebody that you like, somebody that has a podcast. So... I present to you none other than the Bruce P- Pritchard Brother Love fanny pack. And it says on here, uh, these used to be over. It's something to wrestle with. That's awesome. Fanny pack. Thank you very much. And those are handy. They're just not fashionable anymore, you know? Exactly. <laughs> They're good for fishing, though. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Um, yeah, welcome, man. <laughs> appreciate it. You're welcome. Uh Okay, before we get started, too, um, we had some news this morning uh, about uh, a big name in wrestling passing away, um, and that was none other than King Kong Bundy. Um, now, the first thing that I thought of was him not going into the WWE Hall of Fame while he was alive. And then I was trying to remember if he had gone in before they kind of started making the big deal about it, but... He didn't. I looked it up. Um, And I'm getting kind of irritated with that. Uh, They did the same thing with Vader. You know, Vader should have gone in. Um, And then I'm hearing rumors that they're going to put the Hart Foundation in this year, which is great. But, you know, Jim the Anvil Neidhart passed away last year. Yeah. Um, So, but anyway, um, Brace Beamer, any thoughts on any or memories on King Kong Bundy? Mostly the, the first thing that comes to my mind is the five count. Right, you know, fire. Yeah. Other than that, I mean, his work in uh, uh, WWF, obviously. I think the biggest thing that I saw him there, I liked him with Big John Stud when they uh, beat up Andre the Giant, snipped his hair, yeah. <laughs> and he, you know, with the uh, Heenan family. I thought that was good. And then his stuff in World Class, and <clears throat> yeah, a lot of people don't realize he was involved in one of the major storylines in World Class. Uh, you know, he was. Basically, the one, or no, he was involved in Fritz's retirement match. Fritz was going to retire one way or the other. Yeah, he brought Fritz forgot, out of retirement, basically. Yeah, yeah. For some reason, I was thinking that he retired Fritz, but Fritz won the match, but he, Fritz was just going to retire yeah, it was one big, way or the other. Big Texas Stadium show, too, with yeah. you know thousands of people there, not yeah, exactly. at an arena, it's at a football yeah. field. Yeah, so. back when he still yeah. had hair. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Jason, <laughs> any any thoughts on uh, King Kong Bundy? Well, girl, he had no- to be. You know, in Michigan, it was all about the WWF. 
you know, we didn't see the world class stuff. We saw a little bit of of the NWA, mm-hmm. um, but growing up, I, I was a WWF kid. I mean, that's all I paid attention to, and the NWA a little bit. But I mean, WWF was 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 it as far as I, as far as I was concerned. Right. But um, my biggest memory with Bundy was the Saturday night's main event where it was Hogan and Don Morocco and Bundy came in and Avalanche Hogan oh. broke his ribs and set up what would be the, the main event for WrestleMania two yeah. in, in the big blue cage. And when I think right. of Bundy, the tag team was stud, they should have been champs. I mean, <laughs> they should have been the dominant tag team. But when I think of Bundy, it goes back to that, that iconic moment where it's him and Hogan Mm-hmm. At, at WrestleMania two in, in the big blue cage. Yeah, it was a huge match. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I was kind of thinking about his his career um, today a little bit, and you know, obviously, and we've talked about this on previous podcasts, but obviously, WrestleMania one that was like his big launching point. He destroys SD Jones in nine seconds, which really was almost thirty seconds or whatever it was. Uh, you know, gets the monster push to Hogan at WrestleMania two. In the cage, Hogan beats him. But then by WrestleMania three, he's put in a match, which we were there. But um, you know, he gets put in the match w- against Hillbilly Jim and the Midgets. Right. <laughs> but, that was a but, sweet elbow drop. Was, he did, dog, yeah, the yeah, I mean that that, that was still a, a big moment. I mean, a, a big heel move to body slam and uh, drop the elbow on. I think it was Little Beaver, wasn't it? Yeah, I, I can't remember. <laughs> it was Little Beaver. Was it? <laughs> that was. Awesome. <clears throat> So anyway, yeah. Um, so um, wrestling tonight, everyone here mourns the loss of King Kong Bundy. And um, before we get into talking about the Michigan Wrestling Organization, yes. uh, I just want to mention one other thing. Um, we, uh, I, I've put this on the Butch Blood page a couple times, and. Um, I just I just wanted to give this guy a big shout out, um, Josh R- Riles, I, I believe that's how you pronounce his name, um, who who's a big fan of the Michigan Reg- Wrestling Organization, um, phenomenal artist, <clears throat> created uh, trading card art for a lot of the superstars of the Michigan Wrestling Organization, including yourself. Um, so I was like. So I, I don't know who put it on their Facebook uh, page first, but, you know, I was going scrolling down. I was, like, shocked that that <laughs> existed. Um, can you see it? Yeah, it's just delayed on <laughs> from what I'm watching. Okay. So. All right. Um, so, anyway, I just, uh, like I said, I, I, I've talked about it on the page a couple times, and I've uh, posted pictures of it. But I, I am just in awe of this. It's uh, just some amazing artwork. And, uh just want to thank Josh uh, for doing this again. Um, it's it's really amazing. Yeah, we've got artistic chops ourselves, and that's that's pretty good. The kid is that's really is, good. Is an amazing artist. I mean, we I follow him on on Facebook. I've seen a lot of his work that that he posts, and it's incredible. It's, I mean, you I you know some of them you you look at like your card there. You're like, man, is that a picture that has a like a filter over it. Or, yeah, I thought it something. was a picture. But no, I mean, that kid, you know, he's extremely talented. Yeah. yeah. And very, you know, I know I'm yeah. very appreciative of him taking that time out because that, that doesn't happen in five minutes. Who's Who's got more artistic no, chops and, and to you, him or uh, Randy Schilling? <sighs> Man, you're you're comparing apples and oranges. Yeah. You know, two different kinds of, of artists there. Yeah. Both of them are equally as... That's yeah, I could see what you're saying because yeah. Randy has his style. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, speaking of Randy Schilling, he just uh, made his return to the MWO. Yes, he did. did. He not. Um, oh, really? Good for him. Yes. That's awesome. So I know he was a special guest referee. Is he going to continue? Uh, uh, as far as you know, or I, as far as I'm concerned, he is. Um, okay. We are very excited to have Schilling back back in the fold. You know, anybody who has ever worked with him knows what a class act he is. Yes, he is. Um, yeah, totally. You know, he came to us, you know, after s- several years working for other organizations. Right. And he immediately became part of our family. And yeah. uh, for the longest time, you know, backstage, he was the third Klaus brother. 
because oh, we're okay. all bald and <laughs> right. <you> know, we, <laughs> he was bald back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have one one of my favorite pictures that I have is me, Randy, and my brother. We were outside of Ford Field for WrestleMania in oh, okay. in, in two thousand seven, and uh, I I can't say enough nice things about about the the saber tooth. Yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, the same he's routine. just right. he's just a class act, and yeah. he brings so much to to the table. Yeah, I, I agree. I, w- I was really glad to see that uh, that he was making his return, but uh, you know, I wasn't sure if it was just going to be a one one shot deal or or what. So yeah, if he uh, continues to do that, that's that's fantastic. All right, <clears throat> um, now f- first thing that I normally ask the guest is what uh, originally got you into wrestling, Jason. Do you, I mean, is there any specific moment that you remember like when you were a kid uh any specific match any specific wrestler that uh that that got you hooked it was a it was a two-part process the first time i really paid attention or the first time i saw it on tv i was staying the night at at a friend of mine's house we got up on a saturday morning or afternoon and he turned and uh, we turned on the tv we we're flipping through the channels and i saw the road warriors Walk okay. out to the ring with the spiked shoulder pads, the mohawks, the makeup, the whole nine yards. Like, yeah. Wow, these, you know. Was first, that the NWA? Uh, yeah. Georgia World Championship uh, so, wrestling? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And uh, I was like, man, that's that's impressive. And then I watched what they did. They went in the ring. I mean, in 90, 90 seconds later, the, the match was over. They just picked these grown men up and threw them all over the place. <laughs> right. The next week, you know, I had talked to my brother about it. And the next week, uh, we've. We back then they had the the old TV guides, and in in the listings was was wrestling. That's all it said. It wasn't WWF <laughs> or or, or uh, yeah or NWA or anything. Yeah, you just said wrestling. So we we turn it on, and the first thing that we see is is Hogan. Okay, and he was part of a big angle then. And when they went to the actual show, they they did recaps of what happened with Hogan, and I mean I was hooked. Really? Look, line and sinker. Absolutely, I was the <laughs> I was their their target audience. So, did yeah. you not see it before, or I knew of it, but I didn't pay attention to it. Oh, okay. I was more into the Masters of the Universe yeah. and the Transformers and right. you know the yeah. toy. I I, mean, I paid attention to sports, but I wasn't a diehard sports fan. Like I remember the Tigers went went in the World Series in yeah. in, in eighty four because it was such a big deal with with my mom and dad. Yeah, now that you mentioned that, eighty four was a huge year. Yeah, yeah because it was right at the boom of Hulkamania. The boom of Hulkamania, the Tigers winning. Uh, mm-hmm. I think that's when the right around when the the uh, Transformers cartoon debuted. Yeah, I think I think He Man had been around maybe a year or two before that. But, yeah, but yeah, that's a, a huge a huge year. Yeah, <laughs> now, if you're that, a kid, now that man. you run that down. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If you're a kid. It was an orgasmic year. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, so, so it was just something about Hulk Hogan and that, uh, that just, that just automatically hooked you. Huh? Hulk Hogan, when you looked at him, he was a real life, su- he was a real life su- superhero. Yeah. You know, I, I watched the Batman cartoons and the Spider-Man cartoons, but this is a live person who's yeah. doing these incredible feats, uh, you know, working with stud and working with Greg the hammer Valentine and these guys that really wanted to hurt him and do all, you know, take his title away. God forbid. Yeah. And then somehow or another, he, you know, he, yeah. he would do the shake, he would do the Hulk up, and then he wins every time. And it was like, <laughs> I'm sold. What is, where do you want my money? You know what I mean? <laughs> right. And then it's going to, you know, back then, it's going to my parents, you know, can we get this, can we get that? And it was before, you know, pay-per-view and everything. But when pay-per-view became a thing, we didn't have cable. And so okay. I, I would go to a friend's house. But when we finally got, you know, cable, we didn't have a, they didn't have, you know, the, the pay-per-view. Yeah, we suffered that, too, and where we like, grew up. Oh, yeah, exactly, right. It's so close. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Luckily, my grandma in Lake Orion had it, so we got to go watch uh, the first Survivor Series there. Um, but uh, and that might have been it. Uh, oh, we watched more than that there. Did we? Yeah. That's the only one I remember watching there. But uh, Or maybe at your brother-in-law's yeah, house. Yeah, yeah. I think later on we, we kind of were able to, like, watch them there. But, yeah. But yeah, that 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 was odd that uh, Lake Orion had it, but Oxford didn't have it. Right, and then you and you were in Hadley. Yep, <laughs> and they didn't have it yet either. Right. I mean, then we got cable, and I remember that day that that we're like, "What's this guy doing?" Well, we want to sell you, sell you the the this package. I'm like, "Absolutely," because I was thinking 
pay per view. You know what I said? Oh, right. Finally get to watch them at home. Yeah. You know? We don't have pay-per-view. Yeah, we had cable for years and didn't have pay-per-view right. with it, you know? <laughs> so I would go yeah. to uh, to my buddy's house in, in Lapeer, who is a, a, a Hall of Famer with, with MWO. He actually helped form the foundation of of the company. It was me and, and Grossbauer and, and Jason Cloyd. Okay. And, and, I, I, I've heard that name yeah, over the years yep. mentioned, yeah. And Cloyd was... You know, he lived in Lapeer. He he got all all the WWF pay per views, and uh, so any time that we could, man, I was over there. You know, some of my some of my fondest memories as a wrestling fan and as a kid in in general was at his house watching the pay per views. Okay. So watch it back. It's like, oh, I remember when we did this. Yeah. That day we went to the park and we beat the you know yeah. <laughs> right beat the tar out of each other. Then we went back to another guy's house and watched. Uh, Re- WrestleMania eight, so you know, just things like that. You know, it's, just, it's been a part of who I am. Re- wrestling, pro wrestling is who and what I am fundamentally as a person. Yeah. Okay. Now, now you mentioned that uh, you were more of a, a WWF guy. I mean, there there were times when I first started watching it too, where I was kind of like, okay, I'm not going to watch NWA anymore. Right. And then, like, I got tired of WWF, and I'd be like, all right, I'm not watching WWF anymore. I'm just watching NWA. But uh, so you pretty much just just stuck to WWF from that point forward. Yeah, I've I've been alive even through the bad years, man. <laughs> even through the Duke the dumpsters and the yeah. goons and right. you know, like oh god, this is serious. This is so stupid. <laughs> but they had the Undertaker. They had Bret Hart. They had you know Diesel. Yeah. They had Razor Ramon. They had yeah. enough guys to where you still have my attention. The main event guys have my attention. Yeah. But this mid card crap, this is garbage. It was pretty we, brutal. I mean, yeah, you had the the headbangers. I mean, the headbangers were okay, but they weren't the British Bulldogs, right? They yeah. weren't, you know, Axe and Smash, They're right? Just really, you had the Godwins. I mean, yeah. that, that's that's one thing that I that sticks out in my mind. Like during the beginning of the Monday Night Wars, when when WCW started to uh, to to go live, WWF was still was still pre taping their stuff. And like so I'd like have it on I, I I mean, you know, WCW was what it was. I mean, but but as far as like them jumping ahead, you could totally see why. Cause you you'd be watching I, I mean I specifically remember like watching maybe like Chris Benoit versus Eddie Guerrero. And then I'd switch it over and it'd be like the Godwins against Phil LaFon and uh Doug Furnace. Doug Furnace, yeah. yeah. And, I mean, taking nothing away from those guys because, because uh, I mean, those guys were all all had their moments, but it just made it look like WWF at the time was kind of going in slow motion to me, you know. I, I don't and, think they were evolving with the times fast enough. Right. You know, because right. WCW is doing, you know, was doing more reality-based storylines where the WWF was still – very cartoonish yeah you know very out there very they were putting the entertainment and sports entertainment that's great but you can't forget about the sport part right you know what are you presenting in that ring what are you presenting as as your top stars and it wasn't until wcw came in launched nitro the nwo thing took off with hogan turning heel and Next thing you know, WWF is way in second place. Yeah. And they had never been there before. <laughs> right. You know? Right. From right. a TV perspective. Uncharted territory. <clears throat> they had yeah. to play catch up. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was uh that was one thing, you know, as far as as far as him and I go, that cause because we would watch NWA and and um uh international wrestling out of Montreal and We'd be able to see AWA and whatever, but so so we'd be we'd be watching these guys, and then they would like show up in WWF, and they'd yeah. like turn them into just some like ridiculous thing. And yeah. um, you know, I mean, I would still watch it. I mean, Bret Hart was my favorite, so uh, at the time, you know, some of the worst years as far as that goes, he was on top, and so like you said, like the main event stuff was still cool. Right, but uh, but a lot of the undercard stuff, the names crap. on the marquee, on the posters, that was that was still drawing people in. Yeah, you know? yeah. But and and vice versa, the WCW side, 
the undercard matches were the ones that were stealing the show. The exactly. main events were not delivering. Exactly. And I use Hogan yeah, and I totally Sting agree. Yeah. at, at Starcade right. as a prime example of that. Yeah. That, that should not have an, ha, all that oh, build yeah. up. A year build up. I know. And that's what you got for, for the payoff. Right. Yeah. So. Sting dropped the ball on that one, didn't well, he? Well, I mean, that's, that's up for debate because there's a lot. Of, I mean, I, I've heard different stories about it. I mean, the, the big thing about it was, I, I mean, it makes sense from a booking standpoint because Bret, Bret Hart just comes in there to try to get him over as the baby face to have a fast count that he comes in there and does the whole, you know, I'm not going to stand by while somebody gets screwed. Well, it was like one of the slowest counts ever, yeah. and he still comes in and has to do what he's got to do. Right. So I, I just saw something with Nick Patrick, where the referee, who was saying that – Sting came to him and told him to do it one way. Hogan came to him, told him to do it another way. So he claims that he went to Bischoff and asked him what he wanted to do, and Bischoff wouldn't make a decision. So that's what you get. But you're right. Well, I mean, I was uh, talking more like the whole match instead of just the, you know, the count at the end. Like when Sting came out, he looked lost. He just didn't. It was. He looked horrible. You're absolutely right because. All that character was was this mysterious thing coming down from the rafters and the long coat, and yeah. the baseball bat. By the time he got to the match, he came out the same entrance that Hogan walked out of. <laughs> Where was that mystique? To me, be you know, and I wasn't a big WCW guy, but I watched it enough to know what the storyline was, and I and I felt like God, they just blew that whole thing. Yeah, yeah, and that was just the entrance. I mean, it, he didn't. Right. Anyway. And then the bell rang. Yeah, he must have been <laughs> sick or something was going on. But, well, you know, I mean, it was. Yeah. I, and I didn't look into this, but but uh, I, I just saw recently, I was just having a conversation online with somebody about it last week. And they said that Sting was not in shape or they were worried that Sting was not. Whatever that means. I never yeah. looked into it. Well, he so, hadn't wrestled so for I don't six know. or eight months. Well, that's months one thing. Yeah. You know? He hadn't wrestled in what? But he that, it was like it, probably a year. A year. He looked like crap. He didn't work out or <laughs> right. anything. And he wasn't tan. Yeah. And, and, true. And, I mean, you, <laughs> it's true. I say that, you know, a little bit tongue in cheek, but I, I listened to Eric Bischoff's podcast mm -hmm. and they were talking about this match. And Conrad Thompson was just, you know, grilling him because Bischoff made a comment that he didn't look like, like the star that they wanted him to. And he okay. used the fact that he was so pale. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's and, pro wrestling. Yeah. But my thing is, if this is a is a gimmick that has been hanging out in rafters well, that's what I'm for saying. the year, how tan do you expect this guy to be? Yeah. Well, you know? yeah, right. I how mean, are you going to use that as as a basis? Sure. Whether yeah. he's going to have a clean finish at the biggest match. Well, he could have been in shape yeah. too, you know. He wasn't that. Right. He just. But I but I mean, ob just... obviously they were basing him off the crow, so you know that's another thing. You know, the crow was not going out and tanning either. That's so, where he came from. Yeah, <laughs> you didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, I know that's shocking, isn't it? Weird. <laughs> so, okay. Um, so, about how how long would you say you uh, were watching wrestling before you decided to? Well, actually, what what made you decide to start doing the well MWA at the time? Um, what, what what kind of uh, sparked that? Were you already doing, I mean, kind of doing that, like in the house, in the yard, with your buddies? When I was a kid, sure. You know, my brother and I, you know, Pierre Ferry, Jeff Klaus. Um, you know, that's how we spent our childhood. We lived across right. the street from a cemetery. Okay. And there was a part of the property in the very back corner that had no tombstones, but it was kind of like a fenced-in area. So that was our ring because we <laughs> we had ropes. Oh no wonder you're an Undertaker, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so you know we always kind of worked out matches. We weren't just in there beating the crap out of each other. We were actually putting some, some thought into this. And, yeah. You know some of the other neighbor kids would you know come in and follow suit. We had our own little thing, and uh, we lived on. But, but, you know, it's the border where, where Goodrich and, and Hadley meet, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. Uh, we had friends that lived out there. They were starting. They had actually started their own little promotion, but it was, okay. you know, it was, I, I guess, te 
technically backyard, but they had built a ring and they had, you know, they ha- they had plans to take this show on the road and they had really? a lot of raw talent there. Nice. Oh, okay. And they brought me in to help set up the ring and, you know, be a sparring partner. And meanwhile, I'm just taking everything in because he had gone out, worked with the trainer, I think in Illinois at that time. Okay. Really? <laughs> and uh, he had come back and he wanted to start his own thing. And, you know, knowing him, he, he got me involved with it. And, you know, there it was no coincidence that a few days a week I'd come home from school, you know, after I had stayed over to study or whatever. Yeah. Right. I was actually getting my ass kicked. Okay. In sparring. And I'd come oh, in okay. and, you know, I'd have like a black eye or bloody <laughs> nose or I'm glimping. And what's going on? It was probably then, I mean, when I started watching wrestling, I knew that's what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. I wanted to wrestle. Right. You know, so, but as luck would have it, I it just wasn't going to happen on a main stage level like that. So, right. you know, I had mentioned Gross Bauer and Cloyd. You know, they were my you know longtime friends. We were all fans. And we sat down one day and we're like, why don't we do this? And uh, it was after I had kind of put together a, a benefit show in Hadley for my speech teacher. And uh, the show went re- really, really well. I mean, even with all the hang-ups and the ring not showing up and all this other stuff, it still went really well. And it got okay. a huge response. I'm like, man, I, we could do something with this. Where'd you have the show at? At the Hadley Town Hall. Oh, okay. At right the there old downtown. Town Hall, yeah. yep. Yeah, that's a cool building. Yep, I love that building. I you know the first few years that we were in existence, we ran that building. Yeah, because I saw you guys first outside of the building. Yeah. In the parking lot. Yep. Oh, yeah, that's right. And, uh, you know, it just kind of snowballed from there. It wasn't a steady climb. I can, you know, I can tell you that. But, uh, you know, that was the groundwork for what would become what we are now. So so the guys that you had on that first first show, they were, they were all just kind of – Guys that that you'd already been been working with, or, or, or some of them had been working with the uh, with the other group. The other ones were kids in the neighborhood that wanted to be a part of this fundraiser because it was you know like I said it was for my speech teacher, her husband, and his best friend had drowned in the Saginaw Bay. Oh jeez! Oh. And uh, it really affected the whole town, you yeah. know, because he yeah. you know Hadley's very small, right? You know. You sneeze, the guy four doors down knows it. Yeah, exactly. You know? <laughs> but everybody, you know, I don't know what it's like now because I haven't, I haven't lived in Hadley in quite some time. But back then, man, everybody cared for everybody. Everybody, it wasn't like they knew or they wanted to know all the all the dirt. They they right. they cared. Yeah, we were neighbors. We were friends. We and I worked right. at the Hadley Shell Station. <laughs> we were a full service station, okay. so I knew everybody in town because yeah. they had to get gas. Well, yeah. And chances are, I was the one pumping it. Okay. You know, so with the support of the township and the and and the people, um, you know, we knew Hadley. You know, people can't find it on a map, but we knew <laughs> that was the the perfect spot to start this this okay. journey. All right. Cool. Um. So. Oh, I want I wanted to, sorry to go back here, but uh I, I wanted to mention this before I got into that. Um <clears throat> going back to growing up, uh I, I've seen pictures of, of Facebook and uh of, of you and Jeff with like L J N wrestling figures. Yeah. Um <laughs> that was like a huge part uh of us growing up as well. I think they came out in what, eighty six or uh or I- 85, 86. Yeah. Um, I, I, this was just a stupid question that I was going to ask you, but was there anybody that, like, was your, like, longtime champion in your, like, LJN league? Because <laughs> for whatever reason, mine was Hercules Hernandez. <laughs> was it really? Yeah, it was. Uh, and, and it was more. <laughs> yeah, that's it, the it, it was more because, and that's what it was. It was the way, no, nope, he had one arm like this. Oh, so you're I right. Do you're these, right. Like, you're right. So and and his legs were like perfect to do drop kicks. I mean, he did like a bunch of stuff. He did a bunch of stuff that the real Hercules never even thought about. Right. But uh, but did, was there any guy? That... It was Hogan, man. <laughs> I I tell you, I mean, he, I as a matter of fact, I still have all of my 
big big LJ on guys. I, 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 I found them too. I mean, they're they're uh, way worse for wear. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, they're, I, uh, they're pretty beat up. But. They are, but I can't get rid of them. I bought yeah. some extra ones. Did too. you? Yeah. yeah. I don't yeah. know how many years ago I bought a couple lots. <laughs> you know, like going into you know, because you always watched what they were doing on TV, and if you had that particular guy and you and you liked the angle, you kind of reworked that. <laughs> yeah. I'm here to tell you, in my league, Warrior never beat Hogan. No, no, really? that never happened. You had Warrior though? Oh yes, I did. With with, oh, okay. with orange, he had orange trunks and the blue, orange and yellow paint. I remember. Him. Oh, okay, <laughs> yeah, because he goes for a lot of money now. Yeah, I have. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah we made. Uh, <laughs> I, I even back then I was like a huge stickler for scale, so I hated I uh, Gregory Hammer Valentine because he was huge. But he was posed awesome, and though. he was, and he, he looked he like was, him. Where a lot he, of no, he guys... he did look like him, but he just yeah. was too big for me. And, <laughs> yeah, and he was huge. With, and same with Paul Orndorff. For whatever reason, they didn't get those scales right. I mean, those those scales were way off. Yeah, Orndorff was like this. Yeah, yeah. So he does. Yeah, yeah, he was like Great that. So flex guy. Oh yeah, yeah. So, so we actually, so I actually turned mine into my my Orndorff into the Dingo Warrior, who who was Ultimate Warrior in world class before he became Ultimate Warrior in WWE. That's funny because he had the the same hairstyle as the doll with. Yeah, yeah, good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he totally, he totally did. Uh, And then later on, I turned my not that it was a big stretch to do or anything, but I started using my Valentine as. Primetime Brian Lee, yeah, <laughs> instead, like yeah, because he was like so huge. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, we we used to, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I remember I had a feud with my junkyard dog and and Ricky Steamboat after they broke up as a tag team, and uh, <laughs> their their was was, the their hill? foreheads. Uh man, I want to say junkyard dog. I was gonna say because Steamboat could never be a heel. Yeah. He he did he was he he was a heel in my league at one at, at one point. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, he probably would have been a good heel though, you know. But uh, but their their heads. I, I just recently came across them. I was looking through my garage and looking at all my bins and stuff. And their the both of their head foreheads are just hamburger because yeah. I because I used to like chop them up with razor blades and yeah I did uh, that too. Uh, yeah, put, put fake, fake blood, blood on them. That's great. <laughs> 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 I wish I had my my notebook, man. I had TV written for weeks. Did you? You actually yeah. like wrote it? Oh, that, really? That's one thing yeah. that I. That's awesome. The arenas I did everything. that for the wrestling, but not for the you know, the figures. Oh no, I did it with the figures, man. That's how I got <laughs> got used to writing storylines. Yeah, there you yeah. go. Yeah, I I mean back then I used to remember what I'd done from time to time. There's no way I would remember that now, but uh, but I do kick myself. I'm like I'm like man, I should have wrote all that stuff down. Yeah. you know, <laughs> just just to have it. But uh, so um, so going back uh, th- th- now, when you founded that, or when you decided to have have the first show, um, I, well, obviously you were aware of of that backyard league, uh, the one that you that was near you, right? Um, were you aware that that was the thing kind of going on in uh, in other places as well, or not yeah. really? I guess I've I've never really paid attention to what anybody else is doing. Okay. I mean, unless I have a vested vested interest in it. Right. You know, for one way or for one reason or another. Like today, I don't I don't pay attention to what any other promotions do other okay. than um, IWE. Yeah. You know, up in Houghton Lake there. Um, I don't, I just don't care. I mean, oh. I don't mean, I don't mean for that to come off as being, no, I totally understand. Assholeish or whatever. No, no, no. But... I, I understand what you're saying, and the reason I ask you this, I should wait till he gets back. But uh, the reason I asked you that was because because when we did it, we had no idea that 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 was a thing. We didn't we didn't know anybody else was doing it, um, <clears throat> and we had told this story uh, a few podcasts ago. But um, we were at uh, uh, one of the house shows at the Silverdome that they had after WrestleMania three. And for whatever reason, I told my dad to pick us up at like midnight. I was like, yeah, the show's going to get over at midnight or whatever. Well, it was like, I want to say it was like the beginning of January or something. And it was like 20 below outside or something. So finally, at one point, they, they did a sweep and kicked everybody back out. <laughs> and so, uh, I have, so I have another story like that. Re- okay. Remind you later. <laughs> so, so we're outside freezing. 
Well, they send a bus around to pick pick people up, and then they were taking them to a trailer that they had heated. So we're like on the we're on the bus, and Gene or uh, Ray's is talking about uh, you know something that had happened, and some guys in the back are like are like, oh yeah, that's no big deal. We do that stuff all the time, you know. And so we're like, oh okay. So they give us um, the, they they had actually made programs and stuff, so they give them to us. And um, that turned out to be what eventually would become the Insane Clown Posse. Oh. Um, so, yeah, oh, yeah, so we yeah. ended up. Huh. So so those guys were doing it down in Ferndale so that they would come up and wrestle with us sometimes. We would go down there sometimes. And they would rent out um, They would rent out hotels. like Holiday uh, Inns. Uh, yeah, like the, uh, like the conference rooms. Yeah. So we'd, like, wrestle there. So we wrestled in, like, Taylor with them and Hazel Park. But, but anyway – so yeah, up until that point, we really had no idea that anybody else w- was doing that. And um, you know, definitely at the time, there was not the negative connotation that there is with quote backyard wrestling. Right. Unfortunately, ICP I think has kind of uh, <laughs> <Ushered> <laughs> has, has kind of caused that. But I mean, not just them, but uh, I, I mean, we were safe. I mean, we weren't doing all the stupid stuff that that they're doing now. I mean. I just saw a clip, uh, I think it was yesterday, where, did you see that clip where a guy gives somebody a Death Valley driver, like, off the uh, off of the roof through, like, a bunch of light tubes, and I, I just, like, so so I can kind of see at this point where where that gets a bad rap, but uh, but anyway, that's that's why I was asking if you were aware that that, that there was anything else going on. Not, um, at, not at that time, because you got to think, we're talking mid to late 90s before the internet yeah. became a huge thing there was no social media you know so we had no there was no youtube at least i wasn't aware of it so i didn't really know of anything other in this area you know i knew what was in pro wrestling illustrated magazine and that was it yeah yeah you know that was the extent of my looking at other organizations if i read about them in that magazine which to this day i buy that magazine you know, it's, Do you? I absolutely really? love, I love oh, okay. it. You know, cause, really? Yeah, because it takes me back to my childhood, man. Okay. And it takes me back to a more, you know, I can re- remember looking forward to getting that, that magazine. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, us, us too. Sitting down yeah. for hours and just looking at the pictures or reading, yeah. you know, everything. Yeah. Yeah, we had talked about that on a previous podcast as well. Like uh, a lot of the guys that uh, that you wouldn't see on TV. You would know just from the magazines, right. and, then, and then eventually you would see them, and you'd be like, either they were they were cool or they sucked. Like, yeah. uh, well, I don't want to get into the whole Von Eric thing, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I remember being highly disappointed after like, uh, well, I had I had relatives in Texas too that were always touting the Von Erics. They were in uh, they were always in the magazines, and then when I finally saw them, I was like, you got to be kidding me. <clears throat> but I digress. <laughs> uh, so, um, so kind of take me on, trying to kind of give me the timeline, like of the major, and I, and I, I should say this, I know that a few years ago, I know we're just, we're going to kind of be rehashing some stuff. We did the, uh, outside the ring, yeah. uh, thing here with you on, on TV with, the the lovely and talented Andrea Cohn, um, I'm not as lovely and talented, unfortunately, but, uh, <laughs> any relation to the cone that was just been testifying in front of the Senate last week? Uh, let's hope not. Yeah. No but, kidding. uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so, so, uh, it, you know, if anybody saw that, like I said, we're good, kind of going to be rehashing things, but that was what, four years ago. It's so, uh, been a few, yeah. so just, just kind of give me the timeline, you know, so you, so you do the, the first wrestle Rama. Um, and then, and then kind of, where does it go from there? Or just, you know, just kind of like the, give me the points that, that kind of, uh, maybe changed things or, or took you guys to another level. Okay. As time goes on. The first Russell between Russell Rambo one and Russell Rambo six, which was in 2000, it was a steady decline. We started off hot with, with, with Russell Rambo one. And then by the time two and three and four and five, you know, came along, it was garbage. the The show was garbage. The morale was garbage. Um, I had a few very loyal guys that would do anything. You mm-hmm. know, Grossbauer, Grossbauer, and my brother have been with me 
you know, Grossbauer, not so much now. The Marauder, Grossbauer. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I can understand because uh, we're, we're around the same age and, uh, you know, he, uh, <laughs> I had to. He I was a understand. cornerstone, you know, okay. with me, Jeff, Todd. By this time, Cloyd had uh, left the company. He was doing it, his own thing, f- focusing on on personal life and stuff like that. Which, you know, blood, you know, loser. God bless him. Well, no, <laughs> no, because he's still, know. you know, I, I, my longest friend. You know what I mean? He, yeah, he's been with me a long time. <laughs> but um, it was a steady decline, and then we got after the day after WrestleRama Five. I. It was a line in the sand, man. I talked about it on the outside. Yeah, I remember show. hearing this story a few times. You know, uh, it's either you're with us or you're not. And no, what was what was the issue? Just uh, just guys weren't uh, weren't performing, weren't uh, taking it serious uh, enough, or what? They weren't helping with anything. Okay, they weren't helping with set set up, tear down anything. They would come in and do these really crappy matches with really crappy attitudes. Okay, they weren't doing anything to help the cause. And meanwhile, the guys that were loyal to the company, they wanted to see it go. They knew how far I wanted to take it. You know, they're doing all the grunt work. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm like, this is, if we're going to do something with this, we need to do it like now. We were on the doorstep of the new millennium. What a better opportunity. Personally, I had started, uh, I had started a new job and I got, uh, really tight with the owner of, of a, of a security company. Hmm. Um, he actually went into the hall of fame because he was such a huge influence on the whole turnaround of the company. We were working at a, um, a senior c- citizens apartment complex mm-hmm. and we were talking about the show and the company and he had been to a couple of shows. He's like, Who is this? what was his name? Uh, his real name is Mike rule. Uh, he went in, he worked as a gimmick, like for a ghost writer and a, a, a ghost official as, as Maverick. Okay. Uh, and um, so we were talking one night and he's like, you know, you should think about this, 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 and this. And he just kind of blew out the, this, this outline. And I'm just like, okay, damn, why didn't I think of that? You know? <laughs> yeah. It makes perfect sense, but right. it's good. You know, to have an outsider's perspective looking in because you don't have any kind of influence. Well, I yeah. want to tell him what he wants to hear so I get what I want in, well, yeah. in, in the long run. There was no, he didn't give a shit one, one way or the other. Okay. He was just, I, he was my friend. He was my boss. He knew how, how much this meant to me. Yeah. Why don't you try this? All First right. thing on, on it was cut out the dead weight. Okay. We had the meeting. I had chairs set up. They were assigned seats. People mm-hmm. still talk about it to, to this day. Mm-hmm. I went in. They sat down. They found they found their names. They sat down, and I'm like, "Okay, everybody from here over, you're out of here." And about mm-hmm. and about how what percentage of the roster <laughs> was that? About sixty five to seventy. Wow. Nice. And I knew that we were going to be in a rebuild stage. Okay. But I also had new interest of new people coming in. Yeah. This is where social media start starts you know starts to come into play. Right. We had a website. We had email. They were like, "We see this. We're interested. We're coming." So, so what what year was this then? This was ninety nine. Okay. All right. So kind of kind of the beginnings of of the internet and everything then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The internet was really starting to take starting off. To take off. Right. And uh, but you know we had an email. We had a web a, a website. Okay. <laughs> This is where we got guys like Big Skinny, okay. the group called Ruckus, which started out as three, which turned into four. Uh, they were they were our hardcore guys, okay. but they had a very passionate fan following. Mm-hmm. They brought all of their friends from Fenton up, <laughs> up to Lapeer, because okay. by this time we had left Hadley and started to go have more shows at the center building. All right. And, in Lapeer, because it was a bigger venue, bigger venue, bigger shows, right? Yeah, I got to have the talent to have the bigger shows, you know. So yeah. I'm doing yeah. kind of, I'm doing things backwards. Mm-hmm. I but I wanted to have a venue set up because if you don't have a venue, what do you have? Nothing. You right. Have, right. You, you have a backyard. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Wanted to shake that stigma. Okay. So from there, 
you know, and this is where between 2000 to where we are now, 19 years later, almost 20 years later, you know, there's been, we'd go up, we'd plateau. We'd go up, we'd plateau. Oh, a little bit of a dip. Mm-hmm. We move. And, and, it's, and, 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 and it's been like that. We've gone through different eras. We had the Lapeer area. Then we went to Clio and Mount Morris. We had the majority of our shows out there at the at their their Masonic temples. And and let then, me let me stop you before you get to to this part okay. because um, at, at some point I, I won't get into the whole thing, but at some point I became aware of you guys, and I was actually shocked that that I had never come across you guys before. And the, and this was in uh, this would have been around two thousand and five, two thousand and six, maybe. Okay. Um, and so I I, I I looked at your website then, and I wasn't actually sure kind of who was running things so i got a hold of uh dr tony black yeah, actually yeah. so um we uh so he was like hey just come on up to uh this place in flint and and check out the show so i'm like okay so the, it was terry's lounge Terry's lounge. Uh, nice. <laughs> so i like that place that's what i was gonna say well, I, I, down, walk, but... I walk into this place and my first impression was like uh, the cage fighting in that Wolverine was doing in the first X Men movie, where they where they found him, I was like, man, what a cool place for wrestling. Um, yeah, I was just like, it, it was like packed. It was just uh, you know the crowd was into it. It was just uh, that. So how how did you end up uh, hooking up with uh, with Terry's Lounge? That came from Big Bubba Blackwell, uh, who's going into the Hall of Fame this year. Okay, and um, he, he he had been with us for a long time. He, I I think it was his brother. I might be wrong, but I believe it was his brother that knew the owner of Terry's Lounge. Oh, really? Wasn't his name right. Gene? Gene, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep, Gene Reed. And um, so that name sucks. <laughs> Gene, I know I mean, what not, a terrible name. Gene, Gosh. Gene not Reed. Uh, <laughs> they had had another show out there another organization had come out and did a show there and i don't know what what all happened with it i like i said i don't yeah i don't like to ask questions like that <laughs> right it's none of my business so. right but uh, the the interest was hey why don't we bring the mwo in here because they're based in the area because i think it was from a, a, a company that was not based in in the genesee county area okay and he's like, you know, there's this other group out. They, you know, they're pretty well established. Why don't we bring them in here and try this? And uh, I, Josh is, or a, a big Bubba Blackwell, his role is Josh, um, is the one who set that up. And I went in and I and I I met with Gene and I said, this is what we do. This is what I have. And he showed me the space. Is this big enough? And this is how the other organization had things set up. I'm like, no. <laughs> We're okay. not going to utilize your back room, but we're <laughs> going to make this work. Okay. And I think, I think that was the the selling point. He's like, "Hey, you guys don't have to be back where I am." <laughs> Sweet. Oh, okay. So uh, it was the 2004 Bunkhouse Brawl. It was our first oh. show there. Oh, okay. And I re- I specifically remember the first match being Skulls versus Torment. And it was the first show that we ever, or the first match of the first show that we ever had at at terry's lounge and it was packed yeah packed i mean all the way they moved the pool tables out i mean all the way to the dance floor which was yeah across right. the building you know right. it wasn't a huge building but i mean yeah. it was a considerable space you know yeah huge and uh, we got done with, with that show and, and uh i had wrestled in the brawl match which were, which was the main event and uh i was in the back and i was I take it off my boots, and Gene comes back. He says, so uh, I have a calendar here. Can we just start <laughs> filling, filling out dates? I'm like, whatever you want, brother. You want yeah. us, you know. And it wound up being, it, it started out being a once-a-month thing. Then we went to bi-weekly. We were there every other week yeah. okay. religiously for a couple of years. Yeah. And I think when I was with you, we were, for the first part, a couple times a month probably yeah. there. Yeah. Yep. So about how many years, what, I mean, you guys might even still be there if it didn't uh, didn't it uh, burn down? Or yeah, something? I caught a fire. Oh, geez, man, that, that was a rough day. Oh, you know, I'm sure. I uh, Keith Lanko, who just passed away, um, 
who he was the dad of CJ Cash. Right. Okay. Um, sent me a message. He he texted me. He says, "I don't want to be the one to tell you this right out of the gate, but Terry's lounge is burned." And I thought it was a joke. I'm like, "What the hell? Why would you joke about something like that?" Yeah. I turned out the news, and it was on the news. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. And I remember I was seeing like, it. Out. Oh, it was terrible. Uh, we were there for geez, five years, I think it was. Okay. Religiously, I yeah. mean, we we booked everything around Terry's Lounge of all right. of our eras. Uh, Terry's Lounge would be my would probably be my favorite. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Just because of so much history. Yeah. You know, of the company was set in that building and it revolved around that building and the personal re- relationships that we had with Gene and Terry. It, you know, and I watched Terry's kids grow up. Whitney now works for the MWO. Oh, okay. And, you know, she hmm. you know, oh, works, really? works backstage with us. Nice. Oh, okay. I can remember I really when she know. was this tall. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. That, yeah, Terry's Lowers will always have a very special place in my heart. Yeah. I'm going to break kayfabe a little bit here. Um, I, uh, I got I got to work a couple of those shows and oh my god, just the atmosphere was amazing. I mean, there was there was a show that I came out on and it was the same thing. It was just like <clears throat> I remember walking out and it just seemed like it was like wall to wall people. Yeah, and um, you know the crowd was like super hot. I I mean I I, I was like outside of the ring or whatever. I, I don't remember what I did, but I just remember like the crowd just going. It was just so hot. It might have been St. Patrick's Day, actually. Yeah, so I, that I might have fueled you. it a little bit. Yeah. But, <laughs> but, but a couple of good but, wild St. Patrick's Day shows in that place too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. So, uh, so from from there, what what what's kind of like the next the next step after you don't have Terry's Lounge anymore? Okay, so we get the call about about Terry's Lounge, and I thought, well, maybe it was just an isolated thing, and. uh I had gotten a hold of Gene, and he's like, you know, I'm going up there if you want to come out and look. And I was like, all right, cool. I wasn't anticipating what I was walking into. I mean, the whole inside was just gone. Yeah. And I was just like, God bless it, man. This is terrible. Um, Fortunately, around that time, we had started our relationship with the bridge. Okay. Over on on Corona Road. Right. And... uh, that would start our our on again off again relationship with them, mm-hmm. and uh, we had moved exclusively over there. It will put put us on a different part of Flint, mm-hmm. and uh, you know the staff there was very the the staff that they had at that time was very welcoming. Right, and uh, they're like, yeah, you know, we're all about helping other organizations out. It's a win-win situation i'm like sweet so you know we we were there for a good while was that the wednesday night show or was that, that was, later on okay the wednesday night show was so i don't want to derail you know the track you're going the, on the the wednesday night sh- the wednesday night era was what preceded terry's lounge oh okay All right. um, and, and that that was in what uh otisville, in, otisville. okay <laughs> I, I did yeah i remember like like when I was first uh, following you guys, I, d- I think I did go to a show in in Otisville, Forest Township well. Hall. Man, some we yeah. had some big. My one of my top two fa- favorite matches happened on a Wednesday night in that building. And what? Uh, okay, I mean, I'll, I'll jump ahead a little bit, but but uh, you know, this is something I was going to ask you later. But um, what what would you say is your favorite uh, match that you personally have ever had in the MWO. You know, it we're doing goes, top three or five or something. Cause I, it might, you know. Yeah, that's probably to a figure tough out one. That's probably a tough one. Just uh, the Wednesday you know. night match, the ladder match that I had with the real deal, Michael Reaver. And this is Otisville? Okay. This was Otisville. Okay. And it was packed. And um, we booked, we ran that building on a Wednesday night every other week. And it was, we had no business doing the kind of business that we did there. <laughs> really? It was Otisville. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? It's, unless you are in the area, you chances are you don't know where that place is at. 
but man, right. man, I thought it was Otisville slash Lakeville. <laughs> that's 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 what it was called when we were in, uh, yeah. in school. Go like play basketball go, there, baseball, go play right. sports. Whatever. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, we did tremendous business, and I Bob Breckenridge was a huge factor in that. Huge fan. I remember Bob. He's a good yeah, guy. Great guy. Now, now, I, I think you told me this before. Now, now, he, was he the one kind of responsible for you getting your first legitimate ring, or or no? No. Well, he built the ring that would be that would be the precursor for, like the ring that we bring into Owen TV Studio. Okay. You know, our our smaller of the two rings. Yeah. Bob had built a ring before that. Okay. Um, and before that one, we had one that was built by uh, by by Joe Sny, who was a longtime member of our roster. Yeah. His was built out of wood. Okay. So you can imagine. Yeah. You know, <laughs> not a lot of give. Right. And uh, you know, when things broke during a show, chances <laughs> are the show was done. Oh, you know? okay. Okay. Bob, being a body guy, he always worked on on car bodies and things of this nature. Mm-hmm. Excuse me. Mm-hmm. Oh, so he had some welding talent. Oh, obviously. man, oh, man. Nothing that guy can't build. <laughs> and uh, he came up with an idea. We knew that we wanted to have a big show to raise money to either buy a ring or let him build it. Okay. And we did the, that's what the 2001 Christmas Clash uh, was the final event of a multi-event you know, f- fundraiser, really. All right. And... Uh, Bob had built us this great ring, and it it was the landscape. It was the stage that we performed on for quite a while, and okay. it had some big, big time matches between those ropes in there, and a lot of those were at the Forest Township Hall. Okay. Um, so as far as you know, our, my favorite matches go: me and Reaver for the you know for the ladder match. Um, that stemmed from my feud on on camera with Bob, which which I think is why the Wednesday night thing happened and why it was so, so successful because people were emotionally invested. They hated him. Yeah. <laughs> they liked my character, and it was okay. our version of Austin and McMahon. Oh, okay. All right. Um, now, <laughs> another match that comes out, also on a Wednesday night, <laughs> was this match I had against a guy called Hollywood. And I won't go into the long back story, but he had called me out. And we went to a restaurant to watch a pay-per-view. And it was, it was a thing, you know, when it was, it, it, it was Hooters. And <laughs> when they, when they, <gasps> I, <laughs> yes, how dare you? I, look, I, the social you. justice I, warriors I, are I coming for you. Man. I'll find something wrong with that statement. So, <laughs> back then, they showed all the WWF pay per views. Right. We all we we would all go there and hang out, party, whatever. Well, one night, uh, we were there. Uh, the whole company was there, and um, Miller Hall- Road. Yes, I know that one. Um, Ho- Hollywood <laughs> came out and uh, waited till I had had a few adult beverages at me to tell me. <gasps> yeah, I know. <laughs> um, How dare you! He, in front of the roster, uh, told me that I didn't have any talent and um, I didn't deserve the spot that I had on the show and just really took me to task. And he's shooting? Shooting. And uh, which I, I was fine with. You know, he's about that tall. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it wasn't, it okay. wasn't anything. <laughs> right. But then he started talking crap about Todd, mm-hmm. you know, about the Marauder. Yeah. And, you, you know, you know. You don't do that with me, right? I have a very special place in my heart for for him, and I will, yeah. I, will I will fight for him like a brother. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. He stuck by me when nobody else would, right. you know. So you're right. not you're you're, you're not going to talk bad about Todd to me. So anyway, yeah. uh, he challenged me to a, a shoot match that would happen that that Wednesday night, and a I le- said legitimate shoot, l- legitimate shoot. Okay, to prove <laughs> that he was a better. In re wrestler than I was, but working within the confines of pro wrestling rules, 
Uh, I think he really wanted to fight. Oh, okay. Because right. when we got to Wednesday night, by this time, again, social media is a thing now, mm -hmm. and it had just exploded. Huh. And um, we were semi-main. I wasn't gonna gonna put us on la on last because the MWO title match should have had that spot. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. but the entire locker room emptied out, and the, at the time, Forest Township Hall had a, had a, had a, an elevated like a platform, okay, like a stage. Mm -hmm. The whole roster was on that <laughs> stage. It sold out the locker room. <laughs> now, <laughs> what was weird to me was. We were semi made. It was a 10 segment show. That dude spent the entire show in a broom closet by himself. <laughs> really? Would not come into the locker and, and I okay. even went outside. You know what I mean? I, he doesn't want to be in the locker room with me. That's perfectly fine. I said I would go outside because it was, it was nice out. You know what I mean? So I was like, whatever. But no, he stood in, he stood, he sat in the broom closet. He went out first. I can't remember who the referee was at the time, but I came out second and the referee walks over to me and he's holding this object in his hand that looks like a shank. And he said, <laughs> I swear to God, Brace, he says, this just fell out of Hollywood's truck. Wow. But, and I looked at it and I knew he took this seriously but I wasn't serious about it. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just, I was like, okay, well, I'm going to do a couple moves with him. Let him know that you ain't going to yeah. do this. You were wanting to right. go back to work and right. after you roughed him up a yeah, little bit. I, yeah. yeah. You want to come at me. We're going to do this. And we're, we'll be done. And it, <laughs> uh -huh. we'll be cool. Yeah. He's, when the ref showed me that, it was it was off. Yeah. And uh, Didn't he know the referee was going to find that in the normal standard <laughs> yeah, routine know. checks anyway? <laughs> when he patted him down. <laughs> so... Um, you know, bell rig, and it was, it wasn't, I mean, it, it wasn't very long. Okay. You know, but I made a point to make a show out of it because oh, okay. just for, not just for the fans, but to let the roster know, right. you, you ain't going to shake me. Right. You know yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah, This is serious. <laughs> yeah. This, you know, and he tried running out of the ring, and I went out after him, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm twice the size, so I. Called up to him, <laughs> and I mean, I I picked him up. He tried fighting it. I rammed him in into the ring post. And we oh my god, square ring post. So I got it right <laughs> oh, on nice. the edge. Oh, okay. not as hard as I could. Yeah, right. You know. Yeah, not to uh, let him know. Just enough right, to... <laughs> but when I picked him up like this and dropped him on on the floor, that was pretty much as hard as I could. So he was trying to beat feet to the back. Yeah, at that point, he's <laughs> like, I'm done. Wow. So I took him right. back of the ring. And, you know, so what was the heat from? He was. He okay. just thought that you guys were not giving him a big enough push, or he didn't think that you guys should be the ones on top. Okay, he came to me that that winter and said that he was dying, and always wanted to be. Now, t t aside from the person that he is, he has a legitimate passion for the business. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You could, but this is also the same individual that told me that he trained in the ring with Ric Flair and that he put a figure four on Jerry Lawler and all these outlandish things that could have <laughs> never mathematically happened. Right. I just took it. You know what I mean? I was like, oh, he's trying to impress me, whatever. Yeah. Anybody yeah. who knows me knows I don't impress easily. Right. Um, which is kind of you know funny because I made a whole T-shirt line off it. But um, he just, he came to me and said that he was dying and I wanted him to have that one moment. So Christmas Clash was right around the corner. We had it worked out to where uh, he was going to win the the MWO championship. Okay. Without him knowing. Okay. We um, I was going to make sure that he had his moment. Right. And uh, it wasn't long term. He wasn't going to headline WrestleMania or anything like that. It was to, <laughs> yeah. for him to have his moment. Yeah. So <laughs> apparently there was a communication <laughs> breakdown. Uh, at at some point, because he didn't realize this was a transitional thing, oh. and we were going into WrestleMania ten, I believe, and um, we knew what the main event for WrestleMania ten was going to be. You know, we had an yeah. idea of where where we were headed, mm -hmm. and um, Hollywood was not in that equation, <laughs> so.
So we had our next show was two weeks later, and he come in and he had a match with my brother. That was the main event, and uh, Justin goes or, or Hollywood goes up to my brother and he says, you know, I have you know this that and the other thing. I have these ideas, and my brother comes to me, <laughs> comes to me. He says, I think we have a problem. <laughs> 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 and I said, well, uh, what, statement there. What, what's the problem he's like i don't think hollywood knows he's he's dropping the title today mm-hmm. and uh so i went on I, I went and talked i actually pulled him outside it, this was at terry's lounge and um well i was like you're losing the title today you know that right he's like no <laughs> like got all like he threatened to leave and all this other stuff he's like I'll, I'll just take your belt i'm like well how you know how far do you think you're gonna go right you know yeah so he did the match it wasn't the greatest but he did the match okay um so he did the honors he did the honors okay but he was still salty that his title reign wasn't was so short <laughs> it wasn't longer than what it was but oh then, okay then i find out after the fact that he wasn't dying so i look oh, like a, a complete you know jackass in front of my whole roster yeah. you know i was like oh i took this guy at his word which is my biggest fault man i try to give everybody an opportunity the benefit of the doubt the whole nine yards yeah. and they just keep <laughs> right you know what i mean right. just like oh so yeah well, I'm, I'm glad you told this story because i've heard references to hollywood over the years that that I've been around, but uh, but I had never heard this story. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah, he was great, <laughs> and I still let him come back after. Really, after everything, yeah. Do you have a better attitude at that no. point? No, <laughs> no, not really. I think he was here for about a cup and a half of coffee, and then whoosh, he was back out. Oh, okay. So I was like, I can't do it. <laughs> If I can't deal with you, if I can't, if I get to a point to where I'm like, I just, I have nothing for you. Right. Yeah. You've what done you, something you do? wrong. Because you do yeah. put up with a lot of crap. I do. I mean, I, I don't know about anymore, you know, because I've been around, but I mean, you have to if you're well, running a wrestling group. That's you know? one thing. Or that anything, I'll... running a taco stand. Right? Yeah. And that's yeah. one thing that I was going to say. I mean, <laughs> first of all, thank you for, for, for coming here because I, I mean, I know you're busy with a lot of stuff. I mean, I've seen it. And, and that's one thing that I always kind of like thought about myself too, that like, Hey, it'd be cool to be a wrestling promoter or whatever. But after I've seen all the stuff that you've got to deal with over, over the years, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I don't, I don't think I would be uh, too cut out for that myself, but <laughs> it's not for everybody, you know, and you know, God bless those who do, who do have that role because know? there's no way that you're going to please everybody. No. All the time. I mean, no, no possible way. Yeah, he can't ever. No. So, so uh, you know that that heat goes to you, kind of no matter what. Unless you get a locker room full of guys like John Campbell, I'll mm-hmm. use him as as an example. John gets it, right? You know what I mean. He he doesn't care if he's the champion. He doesn't and care I've, if he's winning or losing. Yeah. Right. He just I've, wants to be on the show. Right. He wants to entertain. Yeah, he doesn't care what he's doing. Mm-hmm. It that should be what the ultimate reason why you are in this business for yeah. is to entertain people who take time and money to support your your product or your your project or whatever the case may be. John gets it. Cody Leedy gets it. Mm-hmm. You know, and that those guys are the ones that I really want to teach the younger workers wrestlers what have you it's not about the high spots it's not about car crashes in a ring it's about what story are you telling Mm -hmm. what what are you trying to get across are you if you're here to go straight to the wwe or a and e or what what whatever is going on (laughs) it's uh, Uh, no i I know what you were talking about though but it's it's funny but uh, no, I knew exactly I what you were talking at about. The post, I looked at the poster. I'm like, man, that looks like something for me. AEW. I, I did not mean to. I'm sorry that I no. that I interrupted but that my, rant. You know, but I mean, it's, it's like, 
we got into wrestling because we wanted to be wrestlers. We want, and why do we want to be wrestlers? It's not to be the legitimate heavyweight champion of the world. Right. You want right. that? You go to an MMA. Yeah. We're putting on a show. Exactly. We are in show business. You're a mark if you just want to go in and be champion, and that's it. Well, right. You know. And then you got other people who do not understand what we do. Any, oh, right. any guy can put two guys in a ring and call it a match. Yeah. yeah. But it takes something special to, to put on a show. Right. From, for the entire two hours. You're going to like some stuff. You're not going to like some stuff. But you, you will come away being entertained. And that is, to me, why professional wrestling is the greatest form of live entertainment anywhere in the world. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Hell, if there's um, a nuclear war. The only thing that's going to be left are cockroaches and pro wrestling. You know, <laughs> uh, <laughs> true story. <laughs> It'll never die. Right. Uh, uh, just to go back, uh, when I was talking about the Silverdome story, you said you had a story, a similar story. You, you had mentioned that you got kicked out of the Silverdome, mm-hmm. and <laughs> one of my favorite stories, um, myself, Bob Breckenridge, and my brother got kicked out of Joe Louis Arena, not once, but twice. We went to a house show, and uh, it was a, one of those matinee shows. Okay. And, uh, like, we were blown away, number one, that was like a 2 o'clock bell time. And then the, yeah. the first match was the main event. It was Lesnar against uh, the the big show. Well, so, Lesnar probably wanted to get out of there and get right. to uh, the next show. So... Um, we watched the show and everything, and uh, Bob really wanted to see how their ring was put together. And I've always been curious, too. You know? Yeah. So uh, the show was over, and everybody's leaving. And, you know, right after the show's over, they start taking the ropes yes. down and the aprons down and right. all this stuff. So we're, we'll, we'll just kind of sit here and see how the whole thing is, is put together and what the, what the skeleton looks like. Oh, that's a big mystery when, when you're... First starting to go to shows, you know, like, what, oh, what does a ring look like? How right, big is right. that spring underneath there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. Think, things like that. So they got the, the the aprons off, the ropes are down. They're starting to pull back the canvas. And meanwhile, what we don't see is that they have people all over looking up into the stands, making sure there Just was nobody sure there. Okay. And we got spotted, yeah. you know. Yeah. So we're like, you, you guys got to go. You guys, Okay, we're out of here. I, ushers <laughs> came and everything. So he walked out, walked out along the concourse, mm-hmm. went halfway around and bolted back in. Oh, okay. <laughs> one, one of, the, one of the, the other aisles, and we stood behind one of the big black curtains uh. <laughs> up until they got to the, the steel part of the ring. And I'll be damned if there wasn't another guy. I, I mean, really? he's, yeah, he spotted us, too. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's it. So we're like running out of Joe Louis Arena. So when you said you got kicked out of the Silver Dome, that was a. I always tell people that yeah, we got kicked out of Joe Louis twice, and now they're they're going to tear it down in a couple weeks. Yeah, I I saw that. I read that today, and I'm like, man. Yeah, no. Another building. I know that. Try and get a brick or something from that building, you know? Right. Yeah. I mean, at least I did get a piece of the Silver Dome roof, and uh, yeah. I think I gave. Yeah, I got one too. But, yeah, uh, I did too. Got some chairs yeah. too. My my son got me a chair from the Silver Dome for for Christmas. Nice. Oh, really? Um, they went to a sporting goods store in Brighton, and uh, with my wife, and the, he had seen it, and they had actually had it mounted on a nice piece of wood and they put a plaque on it that says, you know, this is from the Silver Dome and they had all these big events that that had took a place. They had like the Pope and the Detroit yeah. Lions yeah. WrestleMania threes on there. Oh yeah. And my son picked out the seat number three. Oh really? For WrestleMania three. Wow. Huh. And that's <laughs> that's, that's awesome. One, it's one of my favorite things. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. And it's it's in my basement. It's in my man room. Wow, that's cool. My brother had, had actually also bought me a silver dome seat not knowing that austin and carrie uh, were, were at the were same time uh yeah wow. I, think, I mean within like a day or two of each oh, other gee. yeah that is <laughs> so jeff wound up you know buying it too so yeah. i have two so of, have them, of them okay but i need to mount the one that he got yeah me. they didn't have the nice big presentation on it but it's oh, still okay. i mean that is a seat from the silver dome which right. is my all-time fa- favorite venue yeah, that's awesome. I mean, I thought about it, but then I got the uh, the piece of the roof, and I was like, "Well, that's good." I mean, I don't have room. 
you know, I, I have no idea where I would have put a, <clears throat> excuse me, a seat from the Silver Dome. So that's kind of what what held me off from from pursuing that. But uh, <clears throat> well, uh, let's let's jump. Uh, actually, let's just jump to to right now. Um, you have uh, a show coming up this Sunday, correct? This Sunday, March tenth, uh, at the Richfield Road Church. Um, we're on our road to WrestleRama twenty five. You know, our, our big twenty fifth anniversary this year, and uh, we got some incredible matches planned. You know, MWO champion Rick Cartier is on top against DJ Edwards, and uh, you know we're going to have a rematch from the Bunkhouse Brawl. You know, Blackwell and Cody Leedy are taking on the Steel Twins. The Steel Twins are not uh, the most popular guys right now. They got a little. That's a shock. I know. Hey, <laughs> heel steals are gold, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like me some steals. They, yeah, they. You know, class acts. All four oh, of them yeah. guys are class acts. Yeah. Steals have been with me a long time. Um, you know, your who's who, man. You All know, right. tw- twenty su- superstars will be in action and. Uh, we're on our way to Russell Rambo, then we come back here to ON TV, live TV broadcast on, on April sixth. We're very excited about that. Yeah, we yeah, we all are too. Um what uh so where and and when is uh Russell Rama? April the twenty eighth, uh Sunday at the, the the community center in downtown Fenton. It's actually okay. part of a double header a weekend. It's on Saturday we have the Achievement Awards and the Hall of Fame Banquet, for the first time ever, we're actually opening that up to the public. Oh, okay. Oh, cool. They, they'll be able to buy tickets oh, okay. to that. Uh, All right. R- right now, we have Big Bubba Blackwell and Mr. Positive and Brett Travis are, are confirmed for the Hall of Fame. And then, you, you know, your Superstar of the Year, Tag Team of the Year, all mm-hmm. those w- will be handed out. And then uh, the next day on the 28th, it's a big one. It's it's WrestleRama twenty five. All right, fantastic. And uh, I, yeah, I mean, we'll be able to. I mean, especially when we're here on the six, we'll be able to uh, to uh, remind people about that in the in the future. But um, is this your go home show here on the six? Yep. Or? Okay. Yep. This a lot of things are going to be happening in this in this building on on April sixth that will really be that final push towards WrestleRama. So. At 6.05, man, you don't want to miss <laughs> That's it. That's right. 6.05 <clears throat> on April 6th. Yep. Live. Now, uh, we're, we're, we're getting towards the end, but there's still a couple questions that I wanted to ask you. Um, like, when, when you first started, uh, when, I mean, especially, like, the first show that you had, the first WrestleMania, did you have any inkling that you would still be doing this so many years later? Yeah. Did you? Yeah. Wow. I, I, That's pretty amazing. Actually. Well, this is what I want to do, man. You know, I, this, this well, yeah. professional wrestling, I've mentioned this before, is who and what I am. Mm-hmm. Fundamentally, as an, an individual, it has had that much impact on me. Okay. I knew going into this that this is something that I wanted to ev- eventually, and I still have, have this hope that one day this is my only job. You know, right now right. it's not. It's part yeah. of a multi thing, you know, a multi job lifestyle. Right. You know, I work for for GM up at the Flint truck plant. Mm-hmm. I got the MWO. Right. I started the the T shirt company. So I feel like, you know, the GM thing is great and I've met some incredible people, some of my most favorite people in my life I I, I work with. I've got stories for years that i've got that i could take out of that place but oh i'll bet <laughs> that that pays the bills exactly. that's not what i'm passionate about right. that's not who i am it it helps it helps financially to be who i want to be mm-hmm. but ultimately you know if you say what's your dream job i want mwo to be my full-time job I want to be able to, you know, pass this on to my kids. My son has expressed interest. You know, he's really taken an interest in writing the storylines and booking the shows and oh, okay. what all goes into it. He has a legitimate interest. In it. Will that be the case four or five years down the line? I don't know. Right. But right now, you know, he he wants MWO. Anything that he talks about, well, I'm going to take over my dad's company. And, <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. And, you know, 
that's I'm gonna make it. I he wants to be the Shane McMahon mm-hmm. of the state of Michigan <laughs> because he you know he looks at me as the Vince McMahon of the state of Michigan, and I'm not quite there yet, but that's my goal. Right, that's what I want to do. So okay. you ask, you know, do you think you would you would be doing this yet? Because I can't see myself doing anything else. Okay, um, I, I mean that's great. That uh, well, I, well, I, I should ask you this: <clears throat> You're passionate about the MWO itself, or have you maintained your passion for pro wrestling in general? Because I, I know we've talked about it previously in a, in our older years and the way wrestling has changed so much, unfortunately, you know, I've, I, and that's something that I never thought I would lose, but I, you know, I don't care if I watch it anymore. I mean, but social media has changed a lot of things though, because I don't necessarily have to watch the show because any major thing that happens, it pops up on my Facebook feed immediately. Social media has killed this business. Yeah. A lot of it. I agree. You know what I'm saying? I totally agree. I mean, this could be a whole broadcast on onto itself. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, you're right. Um, social social media. Am I as passionate about the business? There are days, even in in the MWO, there are days where I'm like, man, I don't, uh, I don't really want to deal with this crap today because you know <laughs> what, you know what, what you're dealing yeah. with, you know what yeah. you're walking into. But there's ninety nine percent of the time, I'm like, man, I. You know, it starts at the top, right? If you're if you're into it and you're enthusiastic, your roster is going to be, your wrestlers are going to be, the people who are looking to you to provide them that opportunity, they're going to be that invested as well. Absolutely. So, most of the time, it's legitimate and it's it's from the heart. Other times, it's I'm painting a smile on my face because I'm. <laughs> yeah. I, I know there's a piece of business I don't want to deal with, but I have to. Yeah. You know, as far as the product as a whole, I would say I'm I'm as passionate about it. I would say that there are times like in the '90s where I'm disappointed in it. Mm-hmm. You know, I'll watch it mm-hmm. because you know it's wrestling right. and it's WWF and it has that logo and it's got yeah. you know. I know there's a lot of other options. I don't watch New Japan. Mm-hmm. I don't care about Impact. They yeah, don't. Me neither. They don't entertain me. <laughs> okay. Um, that's not my thing. Mm-hmm. WWE has and will always be my thing. Okay. So, yeah, I there. It's hard now getting into the business because you. It's hard to look at it as a fan. You're looking at it as somebody who is on the promotional side. Right. Why are they writing this? Yeah. Why are they booking this? Mm-hmm. Yeah. My 11-year-old self would not be saying, why are they booking this? True. They're, they're saying, Hogan needs to get up and kick Andre for what he just did and blah, yeah. blah, 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 yeah. blah. Or thank God for the gobbledygooker <laughs> coming out of the egg. Yeah. So anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Speaking of that, I know you're a big hunter to pick her. Undertaker fan, did you see that interview that he did uh, last week at that at that church? Yes, yeah, that was pretty interesting. Yeah, it's like, not... he thought he was gonna end up being in, in the egg. I, I remember that. <laughs> oh, that, he did that a shoot interview because we knew that Undertaker. Huh. Uh, well, it was it was with his church. It was like a, a pastor interviewed him for about uh, what half hour, or yeah. twenty minutes or something. But he was totally totally out of character. But he was talking about his debut, in, in, you know, coming up, and they were they were touting the egg thing, you know that. Ended up being the gobbledygooker, but you know he was uh, he worst was, thing. He ever. was worried that he was going to end up being the Eggman or something. Hmm. I I just heard the, the the story where the first time he had talked to Vince McMahon, he you know Vince had called him and Taker picked him. Hello, is this the Undertaker? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. He mentioned. Well, that. I guess. <laughs> yeah, he mentioned that on there yeah. on that too. Well, the good uh, thing is, like nowadays, you. You know, if you don't like what's going on today, which I don't, you know, I'm a bigger fan now than I've almost ever been yeah. just because you can go back and you can watch all the old stuff. The WWE yeah, the network, network is, is yeah. Yeah. the greatest thing. Or even just Slice YouTube Bread. or anywhere, yeah. you know? I mean, there's so much out there that I'm watching now that I didn't get to see before. Right. 
Yeah, good stuff. All right, not to bring stuff down, not not to be negative, but uh, just just a couple quick, a uh, couple more questions. Uh, what would you say, if any, is as as a promoter, uh, what would you say your biggest regret is? If you have any, you know, there's a couple of behind the scenes things that. Uh, Became a bigger focal point in the locker room than it should have. Mm -hmm. And I wish I had been more assertive in, okay. in, in in those situations. So it hadn't escalated to the point to where people are leaving and you're losing friendships over it. Yeah, that's understandable. Um, and that's, you know, that, that happens every so often. It right? happens in regular in, life, right. you know, I mean. Um, Look, you know, I I probably should have said this or I should have done that. But on the other hand, I'm a firm believer that everything happens for a reason. And it was just, uh, you know, that was a particular point in a storyline, you know, mm -hmm. it, just a real life one. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it won't be anything that I'm going to lose, you know, lose and any sleep over. Right. And I was like, oh, I probably could have done that better. I should have reached out more, things like that. But, you know, I, I am, you know, I got a lot of irons in the fire, you know, and I mm -hmm. can't, number one is my family. Right. You know, my wife and my kids are my priority. Mm -hmm. You know, everything else gets whatever time is left over. And that's, but, yeah. Well, on the opposite side of the spectrum, uh, what would you say is, um, you know, the event or moment that, that you're most proud of as a promoter? Russell Rambo 21 at the Birch Run Expo Center. When we, I got uh, to be a part of that. Yeah. Thank you for um, that. Brett Travis, who's going into the Hall of Fame this year, mm -hmm. you know, he was a big a big part of getting that ball rolling and okay. getting that door open for us. And I, I remember uh, going in there to set up for the show and just kind of, Going off into the corner, you just kind of look. It's like, wow. He yeah. started in Hadley, yeah. right. Michigan. Yeah, exactly. We're at the Birch Run Expo Center. That's a cool yeah. building to work to. Yeah. I worked there for uh, Levi. Yeah. 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 yeah that was. Uh, yeah, that was a very cool show and a cool moment for you guys. I would Definitely. say that was uh, my most proud moment yeah. from a show, you know, perspective. There's yeah. been there's been days where everything in the world. Has has gone wrong. Anything that could go wrong. Last weekend is a prime example of that. When we had bunkhouse brawl, had all kinds of issues getting the ring to the venue and all this. But once oh, we oh, but once right. we got there, everybody banded together okay. and we it went off without a <laughs> hitch. Oh, that's great. Great. All right. Um, well, we should uh, unfortunately we got to wrap things up. Um, thanks again for being here. No, thank you for inviting me. This was a and, huge uh, honor. We could bring you back when we have some more time and uh, cover the second half of the MWO or whatever we haven't covered so oh, yeah, far. Yeah, there's a lot that, um, I mean, you're just scratching the surface, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Maybe I, I mean, start my own show. <laughs> 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 well, you could. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, what is your website is? MWOonline.net. Right. And then uh, we're on Facebook and Twitter at MWO Wrestling. Um, Instagram, I, I know we have one. I don't ever utilize it. So yeah, I, I, don't. It, <laughs> I guess just look up the Michigan Wrestling Organization. Okay. I'm sure something will pop up. Uh, all right. Yeah, we're we're all over fa Facebook and, and Twitter, though, for sure. All right. Brace, any parting words? Yeah, I, I'd just like to thank... Uh, Basher for coming on here and also thank you for my first run as a referee. Oh man, you yeah. were great. Everybody <laughs> loved you. Everybody can we have Brace? You know? <laughs> yeah. You guys have you've always been a class act. Right? Oh well thank you. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. This this fun. No, this was a this was a blast. This succeeded. I was a little a little bit nervous at first, but it's like uh eh. It's kind of like Hey, when I did my well, first one, I was nervous too, man. This is cool. Well we'll definitely <laughs> do it again sometime. And um uh, Everybody check out the page. Uh, keep checking the Butch Blood Facebook page for our next show. And uh, thanks again. And we will see everybody, hopefully, next week. April 6th, MWO returning to On TV at 6.05. Make sure you check it out.
Say that.